Amen, 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 and amen. amen. Welcome to New Testament Christian Church, Dallas, Texas. Amen. We're here on Thursday evening, 7.30 service, and I hope you're all here joining us, magnifying the Lord, lifting up His yes. name, and sharing His word and spreading His word that souls may be saved, that souls may be redeemed and set free from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Praise God. If I can ask Sister Champion to please stand and pray for the message and the messenger. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, once again for just bringing us here, Lord God, to hear your gospel word preached, Lord God. God, I ask you to be with Pastor as he preached, Lord God, your untainted, pure gospel truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 John chapter 13, we're going to walk this through about the Passover and Christ bringing unity to the table of the disciples. Yes. Amen. Unity is key into moving forward in life, yes. in all manifolds of life, all aspects of life, all angles of life, the military. They move and operate in unity. Family, us, your family, amen, and other families should move, okay, and operate in unity, amen. Also, uh, the church family, people at work, amen, organizations, different entities and businesses, uh, co-workers and employees should all move in unity, amen, yes. to accomplish one goal, one common goal, but more so the brothers and sisters in Christ should operate in unity, and the Lord is going to explain this to them and share this to them about how they should operate towards one another. But in between that, there's some other events that take place here in the living Word of God. Amen. Building up to the crucifixion of Christ. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, this is before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, mm -hmm. that he would depart, that he should depart out of this world. Christ knew that his hour was come. Yes. There was one point in the time in the scriptures where Christ had said uh, to his mother that his time, he said, you're always ready, but his time was not ready at that very time. But this yeah, yeah. time he knew that his hour was come. He knew something, things were going to end for him on this earth yes. but it was going to pick up for some other individuals mm -hmm. it wasn't that christ was going away amen christ was just going to pass the baton to the disciples but they didn't know they were going to get past the baton mm -hmm. amen so jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father let me grab that past the baton uh, 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 uh comment one more time uh, so it is in life with us uh, when our loved ones or our parents are passed away and we get inheritance, things of that nature, or we have to pick up where others left off, mm -hmm. amen, because we have to stand in those same shoes, amen, as an individual once did until they are laid at rest. We have to pick up. It's always that amen. one in the family, that patriarch in the family, that leader in the family that has to pick up everybody else up and lead yes. them and guide them. In strength, amen. In God's word, hopefully there's somebody in the household that knows God's word, That's amen. Right. And can pick up the family, amen. That one that always says, okay, we're having dinner at my house. And everybody always goes to their house and has Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas and so on and so on. That rock, that strong individual, that one that everybody knows, this is the solid individual here. Christ said, I did my hours come. I'm about to get out of here. He said, should depart out of this world until the Father. He knew his destination until the Father. Having loved his own, which were in the world, his disciples, he loved them until the end. He just didn't love them momentarily, amen, for the time. He loved them till the end, amen. And that's how our love should yes. be for one another, 
and others. Amen. Loving the person all the way to the end, whether they leave this earth, amen, or you leave this earth. The love for your loved one and others should be to the end. Your love for Christ until you leave this earth should be until the end. The Bible is very descriptive, amen, about how Christ loved them. Amen. He never gave up on them. Amen. It was unto the end because the end was near. He said, and supper being ended. You know, a lot of discussions happen when the meal is over. Amen. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, conversations take place. Okay. And the supper ended. The supper being ended. The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, we got to get this part here correct because there's no other way, there's no other way, amen, the enemy can enter into you unless you leave a way for him to enter into you, yes. amen. Your mindset has to be vertical with the Word of God and in the Word of God. We have to stay prayed up in the Word of God. You have to wonder, okay, the enemy entered into his heart, but how did he enter there? Yes. Remember, he was the one that said, when uh, uh, Mary was washing his feet with the ointments, anointing his feet, he said, hey, this could have been sold for this amount of money, 300 pence. Mm -hmm. It was worth all this money. Just the mindset behind that. It showed little cracks and little daylight. And the enemy seen that. And he's seen the crowd. Oh, this guy's about money. He's about self-gain. He's about personal gain. And when we get about personal gain, the enemy knows we're about that. And he sees what? A flaw. And that's where he's able to enter in, in our flaws, in our deficiencies, those cracks and crevices. No different than water. You say, how did water get in the house? Well, there's a crack somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there's an opening. And Judas had one. We got to make sure we have everything closed. Yes. Amen. And in Christ Jesus, are you checking yourself, your, your spiritual walk? Are you checking your walk? Now, are your doors, your spiritual doors, are they shut so the enemy can't get in? The devil having now put into the heart, put into his mind, put into his soul, put into the core of his spirit. The enemy's trying to wreck us there. You know, so much so. The enemy just wasn't going. It wasn't like he was just trying to, like with, with, with Adam and Eve, get them to eat something. He went for Jesus' heart. We gotta be careful. We gotta guard our hearts. The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He knows his destination. He knew what his task was when he was here on earth. He knew what the Father had given him, okay, and all things into his hands. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel, amen, and girded himself. So he proceeds, amen, to introduce to them this unity, amen, the symbolic thing that he's about to do to the disciples. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. So he takes this route here to show them this is how you need to look after each other. This is the caring so that he would stoop down and so low to the Peter's eyes at least. It would seem like that, but to him, he had to show them, hey, you need to really look after each other. And we have to act, ask ourselves, are we looking after our brothers and sisters yes. in Christ Ooh. Jesus? Amen. When you counsel somebody and you speak and encourage them in their life, you are washing their feet. When you love them and say, hi, I'm just checking up on you, you are washing their feet. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you bless them with an offering or whatever it may be, amen, or just guide them in a direction with knowledge and wisdom, okay, and love and truth, amen. It's a form of washing their feet, amen, a form of looking after them, 
A form of saying, I care about you and I yes. love you. Amen. And this is how things are done as a Christian and as a servant of God. In fact, it's even that godly character just as well. Looking after another brother or sister in Christ Jesus. Amen. With no strings attached. No strings attached. Our God is a no strings attached God. I'll prove it to you. So folks woke up today. Amen. And they don't, they care less about God. And God still woke them up. I'm waking you up, no strings attached. Even you yourself, ones that serve God. Amen. Did you acknowledge him today? Did you read your word today? Did you spend any time with him today? Did you tell him you love him today? I love you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord. Did you pray today? He loves us regardless, no strings attached. Pour water in the basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. So he goes down the line. Amen. And you know how it is when people hold up the line. Some are probably saying, I can't wait for him to wash my feet. Oh, what a blessing. Oh, I wonder why he's doing this, but this is a blessing. And then he gets to Simon Peter. Amen. You know, we don't want to be that one that holds up the line. Where God is trying to bless other individuals. Yes. Amen. And we can hold up the line by sitting there questioning God and asking yes. God certain yes. things. And why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? God, you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that. And hold up the line for other people to be blessed. Then come and teach to Simon Peter. And Peter said unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? I don't know even why he asked the question. That's what he was doing washing disciples feet question mark Jesus answered and said unto him what I do thou knowest not now and guess what a lot of things are like that in life the Lord is moving on our behalf and many things are happening good bad or indifferent to you they may seem like hey this is a bad event but we don't know what the Lord is doing That's now right. we don't know what he's doing till the end of the line amen to the end of the rope to the end of the situation. We don't know what he's doing, but he's always active and always on the move. Amen. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's on a mission on our behalf. Amen. What I do, uh, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And doesn't it work like that? How we question things and things may come to pass and we say, oh God, that was you. We know it was him afterwards. And it makes Peter know that. And then we're going to find a whole lot of things after Christ was going to leave the earth. Amen. Uh, when a person, uh, uh, my father passed away, and he, before he passed away, he would share a lot of things with me over and over. Certain things and some things were repeated over and over, and I didn't understand them. But when he passed away, when he passed away, there's the Lord. The Lord knows. The Lord is my witness. When he passed away. Those sayings came back to me over and over. And then I knew what he was talking about. Yes. You may know some things right now, okay? And you just don't get the answer till afterwards. Amen. Till after that person is gone. I witnessed that myself. I experienced that myself. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. So he says, Hey. I don't want to get blessed like this. He thought he was too above and too prideful to get his feet washed. Or that Jesus was too good to wash his feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Now that's serious right there. That's serious. And a lot of folks reject the Lord. Just reject him all in all. Amen. Therefore having no part in him. We always want to have a part in Christ. Yes. Understanding it. I want my grandkids to have a part in Christ. I want my parents, my family members to have a part in Christ. All my loved ones to have a I, I desire for you online Amen. to have a part in Christ. Amen. Whether you understand what's going on or not in the world, in your life, we all need to have a part in Christ. Believe me, the Lord wants us to have a, a part in Him, and we should have that same desire to have a part in Him. I don't want somebody just 
going off doing their own thing and find out later they in hell asking for a drop of water like the rich man was telling Abraham Abraham can you give me uh, can you tell Lazarus to dip his finger in the water give me a drop of water I don't want that for my loved ones or anybody I don't want that for anybody that you know I don't want that for you I don't want it for me I don't want it for anybody else at all Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet. He asked him to read that again. Verse 8. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Draws a line right. in the sand. I'm not playing games now. I'm not playing games. And the Lord will get like that with us. Hey, I'm not playing games now. I've warned you once. I've warned you twice. I've warned you a third time. I told you before. But this time it wasn't a warning. He said, Hey, Hey, you got no part in me here. He draws a line in the sand. And God forbid you're at that point right there. And what if the Lord is telling you that? And is the Lord telling you that? Has he warned you about some things to change in your life? And then told you, possibly, if you don't take care of this, you're not going to have any part in me. That's no part with me. Simon changes his tone. And Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but... Also, my hands and, and my hand, he, he begins to submerge his whole body, amen, in a symbolic process, amen, uh, oh God, of him being cleansed by Christ, amen. He wants to take part in everything. Jesus said to him, he that is washed needeth not saved to wash his feet, but it's clean every whit, and you're clean, but not all. Speaking about Judas, he said, hey, this thing here is serious, though, what Christ is doing here to the disciples. And, you know, this time and age, we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we've got to stick together. we got to work together. Amen. People will call you and they'll have situations. we got to be there for them. We shouldn't be, this is not my problem. That's right. Amen. We should allow the Lord to have his way. Amen. And us being as servants of God. Amen. And God sent somebody our way. The Lord is asking us, amen, let this person, amen, have their way. You're working for me, yes. amen. So let them have their way. Let them speak to you. Listen to them, amen. Yes. Sometimes opinion is not always needed. Sometimes it's a strictly listening and no responding. This is one of those times that Peter should have just been quiet and let the Lord do as he desires, but it's all good because Peter changed his tone and we need to change our tone about some things that God has called us to do and God wants to do in our life. We can change our tone. We do it every year, right? New Year's. I'm changing my tone. I'm going on a diet this year. And it's going to start on the first. I'm going to fast. And it's going to start on the first. I'm not going to make it the whole time. We make vows we need to keep them changing the tone. Peter changes his tone here. He says unto him, He that is washed needeth not saved to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. That, that is serious right there. It, nowadays, we wouldn't be able to handle what Christ handles. Knowing somebody is going to betray you. Maybe some can. I've heard stories where some... People knew that this person was going to do X, Y, Z to them. And God shared it with them. And they were able to cope and manage. Because guess what? They had the Holy Ghost. They had the power. They had God with them. You know, yeah. God shares something with you. He has given you the power and strength to deal with what he's shared with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, why would he share something with you that he knows that you're not going to be able to handle? Set you up for failure. He's not going to do that. For he knew who should betray him. We would go off if that was the case, if, if we knew who was going to betray us. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. Amen. So after he had washed their feet, and he had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? So he asked them, question mark here, knowing, okay, do you know what I've done unto you. And we got to sit there and ask ourselves a question for service to God. Do you know what the Lord has done in your life? 
You know what he's done to you. Oh, he's opened a door yes. of blessings. He's opened the door of protection. Amen. A door of knowledge. Amen. Do you know what he's really, really done to you? Oh, he's put the hands around you and protected you from the enemy. Amen. He says, know ye what I have done to you? You call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so am I. If I did your Lord, okay, and master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. The same things that the Lord has done for us here on earth, we need to do the same things to others. Yes. That's what he's basically saying to them here. Amen. And do we have that type of caring, the Lord's way? Okay? We say, Lord, have your way in our life. Okay? Are we letting others have their way in our life? Yes, there are some boundaries. But still, God knows we can go the extra mile. Amen. We can go the extra mile. Amen. We can't care for those ones that see, amen, that we don't think they need caring for. Yes. Those ones that you think have enough, okay? They may have enough materialistic things, but they don't have enough God in their life. They don't have enough leadership in their life. They lack a lot of love in their life. A lot of folks are very rich, but very miserable. And we need to encourage them to let the Lord have his way in their life. As we let him have his way in our life. If I did, your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example, and he explains to them, for I've given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Now we gotta write, I'm gonna stop right there for right now. Are we doing that towards others? Are we really doing that? Are we really doing unto others. I've seen so many Christians and heard so many Christians just right there just bash other people. And it's like, that's a soul. That's a soul there. And it bothers me. I say, Lord, I don't want to be that way. God, convict me if I begin to speak harsh about individuals and things that are just not right. I shouldn't be Trying to improve myself, amen, and build up my tolerance not to be so judgmental and things of that nature. I need to let you in more, Lord. I don't want to let the enemy in. We know what happens when he gets in. He get, tries to get a hold of your heart like he did Judas. Yes. And get you to betray your brothers and sisters in Christ. And you hear that, hey, this brother betrayed me. This sin betrayed me. Well, some, there's a crack there. Something happened. Maybe you betrayed them first. Either way, you need to let the Lord have his yes, way. Amen. For I have given you an example. I've showed you. You're not blind to any of this. And he's given us his word and example how we should operate and live and be in our being. That you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Amen. I like the, the rich young ruler. said, I've done all these things. And Christ said, hey, why don't you go ahead and separate yourself from your riches and follow me. Mm -hmm. And then the mind changes. Right. Amen. The enemy's got this bag of tricks. Yes. Okay. He's trying to slide them up under you. Amen. He said, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me have lifted up his heel against me. You don't have those ones that are like that, lifting up the hills against you. It is The world is just cut like that, no matter where you go, no matter where you are. Now I tell you before it come, that when it has come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Amen. We should be in prayer day in and day out. Amen. Amen. And receive those ones that the Lord has sent to us. Amen. Pastors in different towns. Helpers in different towns. Preachers in different towns. Hey, the Lord has sent them. 
okay, to you, amen. And we should be on the receiving end, amen, amen. and receive them gladly. Amen. Receive them gladly, amen. And we should pray also that the other folks receive us and receive our word yes. and receive, okay, what God has instilled, put in us, and we share it with them. When Jesus has said thus, he was troubled in his spirit. Christ was troubled. He's bothered. He was troubled when Lazarus, amen, had passed away. He's bothered them, groaned in his spirit, and here he's troubled again. Because he knows his time's about to end here on earth. But guess what? The good part is, is the ministry for the disciples is about to kick in. That's the beauty. Amen. The one seed dies, another seed is going to rise again. He's troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say to you that one of you shall betray me. He's serious about this. Amen. So when somebody betrays you, my friend, We've already been put on notice that there may be one amongst the group or many amongst the group or betrayers, period, okay, in your Christ-like walk environment. Amen. So there shouldn't be any surprise about anything that takes place, but we should let the Lord, amen, have his way in our life and continue to walk uprightly. Don't stand there and stay stuck there. Christ never stopped there with Judas and beat that up. And he knew who the betrayer was. Yes. But he let them all know. Yes. Hey, he's amongst you. Mm -hmm. He is amongst you. The disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. They didn't have a clue. So that tells me, you don't know who was who. Look the part, speak the part, dress the part, preach the part, sing the part, play the part. But here, Disciples didn't know who the betrayer was. So how much more for us? Mm. It's out there. Yes. No need to get upset. Christ didn't get upset. He knew. He knows your betrayers now. He knows the backbiters now. He knows the gainsayers now in your life. You don't know. You may not be able to handle it. We may, we may not be able to handle it. We might handle this whole thing differently. We might have it non-Christ-like, take things in our own hands. Now there was a leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him. So I didn't, you know, hey, whether he was close to Christ or not, or, and the other person was closer, Simon didn't have enough courage, amen, to ask, okay? But he puts this man up to do it. Yes. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be whom he explained, who is this individual? You know, me and my wife have many discussions, and we share things, and I, I say, hey, you know, I'm tired. If I want to know something, I just ask them. And I share the same with her. You want to know, just ask the individual. We need to just, just ask the person if you want to know something. No, hey, why don't you go and ask so-and-so this about the other and bring me back the answer? No, ask them yourself. Right. Go straight to the individual. But Simon here, Peter, therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lied on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that, that thou doest do quickly. That would be horrible. That would be horrible not to take place in the church. But those things happen. Those ones closest to the one closest to the Lord betray set up, lying on, things of that nature. We really have to watch. We really have to have, let the Lord have his way in our life. And we really have to look out for cracks in our life. Areas of our life that lack being rock solid in Christ Jesus. Areas in our life that seem to be wavering 
Amen. Unsure and sure one day, unsure and sure. Areas in our life that just seem doubtful and non hopeful, things of that nature. These are cracks. Areas in our life of, of jealousy and just areas in our life of delusion and things of that nature. And he was rolling with them. Just as scary it was. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. They still didn't know. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him. Buy those things that we have need of against the feast. Or that he should give something to the poor. And Christ never even busted him out by name. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Amen. Let the Lord have his way in our lives as he deals with us in unity. Okay. And in this unity, amen, you may have that betrayer there. You may have that one that's on the outside of the bubble. Amen. You may have that one that's on the outskirts of everybody else and what everybody else believes in. Okay. And they have a different agenda. And they've allowed the enemy. Okay. And not the Lord have his way. But they allowed the enemy to have his way. And not let the Lord have his way. And therefore, he gets that title. Amen. As the betrayer, amen, <coughs> that one, amen, that separated himself, thinking he knew what was best and want to betray Christ for little or nothing at all. And those things will happen. We betray the Lord when we don't spend time with him. We betray him from intimacy, intimate time with him, spending time with him, okay? That's time you... You set aside to spend with him, things of that nature. And we separate ourselves further and further and further and further from him. And that draws us closer and closer and closer to the enemy. Jesus. That's what that does. Mm -hmm. People do it all yeah. the time. Yeah. They do it all the time. The further you get from God, the closer you get to the enemy. That's right. We have to be careful. We need to allow the Lord to have his way in our life. Be mindful of our service, amen, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, NTCC Dallas, Texas. Join us, amen. Be praying for us and we'll be praying for you. I love you and God bless you. Let the Lord have his way in your life. Draw closer to him. Draw a bite to him. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. God bless you, my prayer.